You're listening to the Echo Ratings Eventing Podcast, the show with a light-hearted look at the eventing world, all of the big event previews, reviews, and special guests, and of course, backed up with all of the key Echo Rating stats. Welcome to the Echo Ratings Eventing Podcast. Welcome to the Echo Ratings Eventing Podcast, and it is the Wallaby Hill preview show because listeners we have got one of the last four star longs coming up of 2020 and I'm not gonna lie it's a bit of a corker we're looking forward to this very much now before we get into the preview section of the show I have got a very special guest he is a man who tops the decoratings prediction center this weekend he goes forward with two very strong chances he is a former winner actually of the four star long at wallaby hill as well uh, an olympian the list could go on Stuart tinney welcome to the show oh thank you very much it's great to be on uh, we were just talking weather as we always do and it's pretty hot out there with you guys at the moment isn't it yeah, it's um, this weekend is unusually hot. We have a 41 and a 42, um, not even sunny yet, so it's a little bit uh, tropical. And this morning it's 31 degrees at 7 in the morning, so I'll go out and give them a ride as soon as I finish. Is it forecast to be that warm heading into Wallaby Hill weekend as well? Or is there a little bit of respite, do you know? <laughs> No, we're pretty lucky. I think the weather this year looks looks quite good. Um, the last we've had some a lot of rain at Wallaby Hill in previous years, but this year looks great. It's going to be sort of high twenties, I think, and and just a little bit of rain forecast. So it sounds almost perfect. Oh, brilliant. Perfect. Cool. Well, let's just introduce any of our listeners who aren't familiar with Wallaby Hill. Um, tell us a little bit about the venue and what is in store this weekend. It is just the most beautiful venue. It's um, just a little south of Sydney and it's up high up. It's right on the coast, but it's actually on top of cliffs. So it's called the Highlands. So it's actually quite a lot cooler there than a lot of places around. And it, it gets a little bit of rain because of it. So it's green and um, yeah, it's just beautiful. Alex and Derek just do a wonderful job of presenting it. And yeah, no, we're very, very lucky to have the event. And the facilities are quite incredible there as well, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, it's it's just perfect, really. You have lovely surfaces to compete on, um, ebb and flow sort of surfaces. But the, the main arena, when the weather's good, is um, just a beautiful grass surface. So no, we're very lucky to have it. Well, well, we cannot wait to see how the competition all unfolds uh, this weekend. You actually go forward uh, wearing a couple of different hats, don't you? Because you are not only riding in in the four star long, which we'll talk about your two chances in a moment, but also course designer for the the one star, the two star, and the three star. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Yes. How do you find the juggle? Because obviously you've ridden at top level for a really long time. Do you enjoy that sort of second aspect to it? Yeah, I do quite enjoy it. Um, sort of getting the balance of the course riders, I find a little bit difficult. Yeah, I want it too tough, I want it too easy. Um, yeah, I do quite enjoy it, but riding at the same one, I find a little bit hard because I just have so many courses in my head and I can't tell you how many times I've gone the wrong way when I've been on courses <laughs> that I've designed at the same venue, so I hope I don't do that on the weekend. <laughs> Please don't, please don't. Um, and tell us a bit about, obviously, the four-star courses are designed by Mike Etherington-Smith, but obviously 2020 isn't a normal year and uh, he's not been able to head out. So how how is that all working this year? Um, we have Vince Roach as the course designer and we're getting a lot of influence from Mike's previous track. So um, Mike's been building there for a few years and sort of mixing you know the tracks that he's had over the last few years together and and it's come up yeah it's really good I think it's going to be a great event so um it is tough because we can't get any international people in and the only people that can fly into Australia are Australians returning home so yeah we're really quite stuck with um running the event and running an international event but I think we've done a great job of doing the best we can yeah, massive credit to the organisers and the whole team because it is, it's these kind of logistics that you don't necessarily um, 
sort of think about when when you you know it's all about the how can people travel lockdown all of those things but actually the wider impact is really really big as well and and the sort of the availability of people to the event that would normally be there that aren't able to travel all of those things Uh, but we have got a brilliant lineup now I have been looking at both of your horses. Uh, I want to start with Celebration, who tops the Echo Ratings Prediction Centre. No pressure, but 33% win chance, which is pretty, pretty strong. Um, Just a nine-year-old has run at the level once previously and actually won on that occasion, Um, but has an incredible win strike rate I think from 15 international competitions and actually only uh, 14 completions seven wins he has which is extraordinary tell us a bit about celebration yeah no he's a beautiful horse he's owned by Elizabeth Brinton we bought him in Germany a few years ago and he's just yeah he's just a a gorgeous horse to work with he's still learning he's still improving which is great um he's um one yeah, he's only done one long at this level, but he's done quite a few four stars now. Um, he's just a, a great, he's a nice jumper. He's nice on the flat. He's a beautiful type of horse. He's, yeah, like, we love him a lot. I obviously, Echo Ratings have been crunching the numbers and I was looking at, at some of his sort of stats and he has the best six run average for dressage in the field, 28.4, but is uh, regularly sort of mid 20s. Uh, now, actually, Fun fact for you listeners, only three horses have ever previously scored in the 20s at Wallaby Hill in the four-star long out of, I think there's been about 86 starters. So this horse would certainly be among those that would be expecting this weekend. Um, In fact, Stuart, you were one of them with Warhawk back in 2018, the other two being Clark Johnston Balmoral Sensation from last year, who scored a 26.5 and the best ever test we've seen at the venue was in the four-star long was Tim Boland and GB Billy Elliott. 26.4 back in 2017. But what I'm trying to say is actually he would be a very, very good chance of scoring in the 20s here this weekend and, and should be well in contention after the first phase. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, he's the last couple of tests he's done. He's, yeah, just getting those numbers down a little bit, getting them more mid-20s and a little lower. That's sort of our aim. And he's got the potential to do that, which is great. And... To be competitive these days, yeah, getting to those low 20s or even below would be cool. I know, that's the thing, isn't it? It is getting tougher. Uh, But certainly one to watch in the first phase and actually uh, a very, very good cross-country horse, but has also only ever had one pole rolled in the show jumping in his international career and I think is the best show jumper in the field on Eck Ratings numbers as well. Um. So Celebration is the first of your rides. Uh, then we go on to Laporis, who is also a nine-year-old and actually finished as runner-up at Adelaide last year on his debut at the level. Yeah, he's a, a gorgeous horse. He's um, he's still such a baby, though. Like, although they're the same age, he's just been gangly and he only stopped growing, I think, just before Adelaide, <laughs> the month before Adelaide last year. He's, um, he's still... Yeah, a little bit of a baby, but he's just a lovely horse, got a lovely attitude. And to be honest, that's why I sort of took him in the five-star at Adelaide. He, anything you sort of give him the challenge for, he goes, oh, yeah, I'll have a go at that. So he, um, he stepped up really well there and, and, and competed at that level quite early, I think, but did a, did a great job at it. So hopefully just improving all the time. And as he matures, he's going to be a really good horse. Is is unusual that we see an eight year old as he was at the time competing at five star. I think we spoke about it on the Adelaide preview show last year. But he scored a, a thirty one point nine in the dressage, clear cross country with a reasonably quick time as to how people were running on the day. Just the one pole rolled show jumping, and actually he's another horse that has a, a very very strong jumping record. Both of your horses do because. Uh, Laporis, 12 internationals, only had two poles down in the show jumping and he's never had an international cross-country jumping penalty either, has he? Um, hasn't he? That's good. <laughs> um, yeah, no, like there you go. So he... <laughs> Very good. Um, yeah, like I said, he's just a, a lovely horse and he's learning all the time and he's um, quite a bit more thoroughbred than his heraldic and I think he's about 70% thoroughbred as well. So he's good with the galloping and yeah, just as he matures more and, and he's just starting to fill out now because he was like a 
teenage boy, really. He was just long and gangly and was struggling to put on some muscle. So he's just in the last six to eight months, he's starting to actually build up a little bit, which is great, getting stronger. How would you anticipate the the cross-country time to be uh, at Wallaby Hill? Uh, It's always quite tough, the time, and it's deceivingly undulating and hilly. It sort of doesn't look that much. Um, There's a few pulls and stuff, but when you're riding around the track, it's quite tiring and it uh, takes it out of them a little bit. So, yeah, the time is always a bit of an issue and hopefully they will have good ground and we'll be able to gallop well on it. So we'll see how we go, but, yep, I'll be flapping the elbows a little bit, I'm sure. (laughs) You'll have your foot down. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Um, Obviously, the main focus is wallaby hill this weekend and two very very good chances but it it would be an important weekend in terms of what happens in 2021 as well both horses will be turning 10 next time they both actually already have uh, their olympic qualification i think would that be something on your radar at the moment yeah for sure i mean the hard part with us is we because we've been sort of trying to eradicate the virus as much as anything we haven't been out a lot we haven't actually been eventing much at all so to get them out and and to sort of work with the selectors and trying to do a good job to get selected that's sort of what happens from now on really because once again we don't know what's going to happen early next year so definitely any runs we're doing we're trying to um yeah educate the horses get them better and of course um presenting them for the selectors as best we can well, you can only do what you can do, and good luck this weekend, Stuart. I between between your two horses, I will just do some quick maths. So, uh, Celebration has a thirty three percent win chance, Laporis an eleven percent win chance, so forty four percent across your two horses um, puts you in a really strong position. We're going to talk about a few of the other contenders a little bit later on in the show, but definitely ones to watch and two horses, listeners that I think you will absolutely want to keep on your radar. Not only this weekend at Wallaby Hill, but also going forward into 2021. So Stuart, thank you very, very much and good luck. Make sure that you remember those courses. <laughs> thank you. That'll be my first goal. Um, yeah, thanks very much. And it's been very enjoyable listening to the podcast. Oh, it's been brilliant to have you on. So thank you very, very much. We have to, we'll have to get you and Gemma on the show at some point. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, but good luck this weekend, listeners. Uh, a huge thank you to Stuart. And now we are going to turn our attentions to a few of the other key contenders in the Wallaby Hill field this weekend. Oh, it was good to have Stuart on the show and very interesting to hear his two rides going into Wallaby Hill. And listeners, as I say, look out for them this weekend, but they are two very much ones that are going to be at the top for a little while, I feel. Um, Now, let's talk about the rest of the field because he has got some competition derm and we are going to talk about a few of the few of the ones he needs to watch out for. First of all, how excited are you for Wallaby Hill? I can't wait. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? Actually, and I've said this on a couple of shows previously, but try on in the US which uh, has come and gone in the not too distant past and then Wallaby Hill are probably the last two and we've known for ages these were going to be the two last big events for us over the year and we haven't had anything really we haven't had anything in ages so I think they've I mean they're always exciting but this year like how long is it Nicole since I've been like and then we've got Wallaby Hill don't forget Wallaby Hill and at the end of the year we're gonna have Wallaby Hill we'll have Wallaby Hill (laughs) it's finally here we're finally out of events for the year after this uh so yeah it's great it's gonna be so good now actually it's brilliant to see a few of the the sort of favorite Australian combinations who will be very much as I said to Stuart looking to, to catch the eye of the selectors And this is a real chance for them to do that and to showcase what they can do going into 2021 and leave a lasting impression over the winter as well. We've obviously talked to to Stuart about his two rides. Um, He may or may not feature on our podiums in a little while, listeners, but let's talk about Mm. a couple of the other big guns. Start with Megan Jones, who is next on the Prediction Centre. She's second favourite or joint second favourite. Or joint, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, Kirby Park Impress. I think I put this this combination up to, if not win, then certainly be on the podium at Adelaide in the five star long format last year. D. Yeah, she's fast. Is the I mean of this field, she has top speed percentage, and I suppose it's difficult to call. I think you've talked about it, haven't you? It's difficult to call at this stage whether we're going to have 
a really tough time or whether it'll be not so much. We don't have that many runnings to judge it across, but um, it tends to be quite tough. I'll come back to that. But um, the big one for this pair is, I mean, they're they're well able to do a test in the 20s, which is you know going to be very positive here if they're able to start on that. I think their six run average is 29.5. Um, they're used to the level. Megan is used to the level. Experienced rider, so she's done plenty. Of, I think this is number eleven in terms of four star longs. Kirby Park and Press has uh, at least three previous attempts or previous goals at this level. So no lacking in experience. Uh, they know the venue. They're able to do a dressage test in the 20s. If time comes up tough, which I think they will be hoping for, um, then they're one of the fastest. So I I think deserved, yeah, deserved favoritism in that region. I know that they're 20%, so they're just behind Stuart. But yeah, I think it's, I mean, they're definitely going to be on your podium, I presume. They're definitely on my podium. I'm just trying to think of where on my podium at the moment. Yeah, the only thing I would say, and, and the horse's experience, I say, has been to, to five-star level. Um, they, I mean, they were runners-up at Adelaide in the five-star back in 2017. Um, they've had numerous placings at four-star long level as well. So they're the most experienced combination in the field as such. But they've had very little match practice recently. They didn't go to plan at Adelaide last year. Um, and they haven't actually run internationally since the spring. Um, so a little bit like everybody is perhaps not had the preparation that they would have liked in 2020. I would mm. just put that out there as, you know, something to think about perhaps. Um, but I really like this horse. <laughs> she will will be certainly pushing all the way. Absolutely. Um I mean, what do we think in terms of a start? I mean, the interesting one, if we look at like, I suppose we were probably looking at a recent dressage test. So her last two are 32 um, at Tonnenbuck in Victoria in March and uh, 33.7 at Adelaide this time last year. Before that, she'd had a couple in the 20s, 28 at Albury and 27.4 at the wonderful Goldburn. But I think, um, yeah, if they can stay at 30, that's the key. Yeah. But, um, I think the, the one for me that leads the dressage is the man we've already spoken to yeah. with Celebration, Stuart Tinney. But I, I don't think Megan will be wanting to give him too much headway in that first phase. Um, oh, God, he, he will lead the dressage, like won't he? Yes. Yeah, yeah wow. Yeah. I'm looking at these results. Yeah. 25.8 last time out of Camden. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Had one down though. Kirby Park. Well, that's, yeah, that's the oh, only one down, is it? It's the only one down it's ever had in its international career. I don't know, so Nicole. I don't know. Um, I know. I know. Um, okay, let's talk about the man who has been uh, on really good form at the venue in the last few years. He has. He is the defending champion. In fact, I think he's won it the last two years on the trot in Shane Rose who comes forward with the horse that he won on last year, Easy Turn, a joint uh, second favourite win chance of 20%. And actually, this horse that perhaps took us all not a little bit by surprise last year, but, you know, stepping up to the level, I think, for the first time when they went on to win. What do we think his chances are of defending that title? And actually, wouldn't he go for three in a row at Wallaby Hill this weekend? I'm going to go for him. I know... You're a little bit in love with Stuart Tinney and Celebration. And I think we've talked about Megan and Curry Park and Press, and I think they're justified there. But I think, if I'm not mistaken, I wrote off the chances of ultimate velocity two years ago in this podcast. I certainly paid not enough attention to Easy Turn last year. And they both came out on top. And Easy Turn is back. And I think... As long as she can do a dressage test again, like when you were looking at that, she she was brought eight marks behind Stuart and celebration. I think at Camden, something along those lines. Gonna like yeah. she's, gonna, she's gonna need to turn. She's gonna need to be a little bit closer. She is fast. I mean, I think she averages just she averages what about three time penalties. Um, she's a good speed rating, eighty two percent. 
not a huge amount of experience, but the last time she was at the level, she won. So, um, you know, she knows the track. And of course, that was here. I, yeah. yeah, there's loads to like about her, Nicole, but she's going to have to start hopefully closer to 30 than 33, 34. She she won last year by finishing on her dressage score of 30.1. The, the, mm. the point I would make, she's a very good show jumper as well, generally speaking. She's had 320 penalties in her last five international cross country runs. Um, you know, you oh, can't she. afford, yeah, you can't afford to have that here. Where was that? So, oh, Tam, Tamworth and then Adelaide in yeah. the four star short at Adelaide. And, yeah. and then, and you Gorban. know, I'm going back yeah. into last year when she'd stepped up to the level for the first time. And she, you know, she is only an eight year old. So she won last year as a seven year old at four star long level, which we don't see very often. I'm not doubting Shane's brilliance by any stretch of the imagination. And we'll talk about another of his rides in the other class in a moment. But I would say there is still a couple of question marks over her her cross country format at this level. Yeah, she was the youngest horse, a seven year old, to win the four star long here. Um, when Stuart won in twenty sixteen on Queen Mary, uh, she was eight. Izzy Miyaki won it with Emma Bishop. Uh, she was nine, and Ultimate Velocity was nine as well. She's come back as an eight year old. It has been done before a few years back, um, but as you say, that. That win was built on that FOD, you know. She stayed on that 30.1. And, yeah, okay, I'm trying to talk myself into it, but you're probably right on, you, on celebration. You, you, were so, it's just, you were so strong on it for a second. I was so I, close. She also, she has the, it's the best finishing score that we've seen at the venue as well. Like, the only, like, Easy Turn finished last year on 30.1. And Balmoral Sensation was on the 30.5. And I mean, that's a good win against Balmoral Sensation. Who's and Waitangi, Pr- and Waitangi Pinterest. Yeah, yeah. it was a strong field last year and she she took us by surprise a bit, but she deserved that win against horses that have been top five at badminton and the Olympics. So, um, you know, fair play to her. Uh, I just would be cautious. cautious. Because of those 20s, is that what you're thinking? I'm in love with celebration. <laughs> I said it, I said it. I said it. <laughs> I know, um, yeah. Well, you're right. You have to. You're right. You have to look at the twenties. I mean, yeah. Can't you can't not you can't not see them there. Um, three in the last five, yeah. And then she had two down last time at Camden as well. Thirty three start, seventeen time penalties and two down. Before her last run at Camden, she had had a string of about twelve clear show jumping rounds. Um, so she's a very very good jumper and and look I'm not I'm not doubting Shane's brilliance as well he has excellent course form and if anybody can come back and win it three years on the trot he can um but it, I would say that on paper we're perhaps seeing why Stuart and Celebration are looking a little bit more favorable um is there anybody else in the field who could challenge I would say um, Emma Mason and Warrego Marco Polo. They have an yeah. 8% win chance and actually come here having had a really good uh, second place finish in their four-star short as preparation. In fact, they've had a couple of good runs um, internationally this autumn as preparation for this. So I would um, very much be looking for them to put in a, a strong performance haven't quite fired at four star long level previously but that's not to say that they can't hear of the ones that can win it i think that's right i think you're is laporis still in the four star long yep laporis is still in the four star long so stuart has two very good rides um uh, and laporis has a great shout if he's if he's here he's a great shout as well yeah, the only thing with Laporis is um, his dressage would be early mid thirties, which is still when Just, you when you're close enough to finishing on it. And he is a very very good jumping horse. And I know Stuart thinks that a huge amount of him and that he's grown up a lot. Um, possibly just going to be chasing a couple of the others after the first phase. I don't know. He probably only is chasing celebration. I don't think he'd be that far. I mean, looking at those dresses, he's not a million miles away from from Megan or Shane. 
Kirby Park and Press are easy turn. I don't think so. I think Laporte. No, I think Laporte's going to be there. We'll have to sort this out when we come to the podium. But he's got some good results. I mean, podium in his last two runs at Adelaide and Camden. Now Adelaide was last year, obviously, but came third at Camden on a on a finishing score of forty five. 10 time penalties on top of a 35 dressage that you're talking about, Nicole. But that is his worst dressage test since Camden the year before. I mean, he'd had, what, one, two, three, four, five international tests in between, all in the low 30s. Yeah. I think, and I, I think that's mm. where, he, where he's got to be. Um, but then, like you say, the, the record finishing score that we've seen at Wallaby Hill was 30.1, which came last year courtesy of Shane Rowe's Measy Turn. So... It is a it is a tough old. Oh, it was the it, it, oh, it was the standout. Sorry, it was the standout uh, cross country round at Adelaide, though, wasn't it? Oh, he was class at Adelaide. An eight year old going five star, um, and he looked really, really smart. Um, he just looks so calm and controlled all the way. Let's be honest, Stuart is not stupid. He is not going to take an eight year old to Adelaide to a five star unless he feels that the horse is absolutely ready. Um, and he really did. So, Ooh, do you want to do your podium? Like, uh, one thing before we do our podiums, just we we touched upon it with the cross country time a little bit earlier on. Uh, last year, eleven people, so fifty percent of the field made the time. But before that, we had had barely anybody make the time cross country, had we? Yeah, hang on, I'm just looking for it. it you're right; it is a long time. Um, and that was probably reflected, Nicole, in those low finishing scores very rare that you get finishing scores in yeah the, in the low in the low or mid 30s i think was it like four of the best five ever finishing scores all happened in in 20 in 2019 i think those ones i called out yeah the lowest before that was uh izzy miyaki and emma bishop back in 2017 35.4 that was the lowest until last year when we had four horses yeah. between 30 and 30 two and a half your old friend Coco Pop and Candy coming in at yeah. 32.5 yeah um, yes you're right it's I mean everything a lot depends on time there but I think if the time comes up tight Laporis probably won't mind it too much um, I don't think Easy Turn will mind it too much what's celebration speed like I can have a look that's a question now yeah, I'll just double check because to be fair, I think hasn't really. I think that would be a question mark. Hasn't really had to to super fire. No, has, I mean, they're finished, fine. Has, yeah, they, I mean, they've not had to really, really push. They won their only um, four star long previously with two time faults, and actually, they picked up uh, four seconds over the time and were second fastest uh, last time out at Camden, but they finished behind Virgil and Shane Rose, who were the only people to make the time, and and everybody else was in double figures. So I'm going to say they're fine on time. Yeah, I think you're right. I think yeah. you're right. Be a good battle if it comes up as a tough oh. time, I think. It's going to be exciting. Go on, give us your podium for the four-star long Wallaby Hill Dam. Who wins it? Uh, you're right. Your Your boy wins it. Celebration wins. Um, celebration wins easy turn comes second and Laporis comes third and they okay. nudge Megan Jones back into fourth place okay. okay what do you think I am going to say that uh, Stuart and Lepor- uh, celebration win oh. Stuart celebration win and I'm going to say that he does the one two uh the mm. fourth will be second um now do i go shane rose easy turn he loves wallaby hill going for three in a row will he be on my podium mm, do you know what i'm going to talk about him in a second in a four star short i'm going to say emma mason warrego marco polo come on emma you can get on this podium um, are we going to give a it. shout out to uh are we going to give a shout out to friend of the pod Yes, Sarah Clark. I'm hoping that the borders have opened and that Sarah is able to go to um, Wallaby Hill. Mm, she's on LV Blue Jeans. Um, 
I think it'd be interesting. So if we can get a start. So last time out was one of their best international dressage tests that I can see here for blue jeans. Start on 36, which is a good start. And it had a very good cross-country jumping run. I would say let's let's imagine, Nicole, that we get uh-huh. let's imagine that we get a tough time. Uh-huh. Blue jeans. Top five. She comes. Oh, go on, Sarah. Thinks she can with do brilliant. it. Brilliant. Yeah, hundred percent. Definitely. I'm That'd gonna go brilliant. with it. She's okay. gonna start on. She's gonna do a. She's gonna do a thirty-five point five. Five time penalties. Keeps the rails up. Yeah, she's gonna go in top five. Come on, Sarah Clark. Okay. Come on, Sarah. Um, let's talk about the uh, four star short. Yeah. Um, because there's there's one horse in this field that, that has a nearly 50% win chance, and there's a reason he has a nearly 50% win chance. It is Shane Rose with Virgil, who in my mind is one of the best horses in the world at the moment. He was on the podium at Poe in the five star last year. Um, he's been second at Adelaide previously. He's been top ten at Le Moulin. He's a great, great horse. He's an event rider masters winner. And I just think it's very hard to see anybody get past him. I I would put him up there as my winner in the four star short. Oh, that's very brave of you, isn't it? Virgil. I to know, win. going against the numbers, me. <laughs> well done. Well done. Very brave. I mean, the hard thing with a horse like Virgil, you know, because I completely agree. I think he is one of the best in the world. The hard thing at this time is you've so like when you go in as such a massive, massive favorite, I suppose you've so you've so little to gain, don't you? Because if you win, everyone says, well, of course you were going to win. But yeah. if you put a foot wrong, it's like a massive shock, you know, that will resonate not just around Wallaby Hill, but also around the world. Um, yeah. because people will be watching people will be tuning in to see this like they'll want to see and they'll you know they'll want to see results everybody will check how did Virgil do this weekend um, yeah and the one thing I, I really admire about Shane and his team with this horse is they aren't ones to shy away from sort of putting themselves out there like last year for example they could have stayed at home they could have gone to Adelaide they would have gone as one of the hot favorites but they didn't they they paid a huge amount of money to travel over to Europe and take the horse to Poe and really put themselves amongst a a different set of competitors that actually um the horse proved himself again and I, I don't think the pressure would would feel but I do know what you mean everybody's going to be watching and they're expecting him like we've just said oh he's going to win it's not that easy it's not that straightforward but he he surely holds the the pack of cards this weekend he's an absolute class act isn't he when you look at the results I mean he just you wherever you send him he's quite underrated I think I mean he's um yeah he's he's had a couple of I guess a couple of high profile-ish blips on his cross-country record with the World Games in Tryon and with a, a, a frangible device at Burley back in 2016. But, I mean, this horse has been absolutely everywhere. He's been over to Blenheim. He's won... Uh, he won Blair, do you remember? Pretty much every level. He won the Event Rider Masters at Blair. He's been top to Pendle and Moulin. Um, he, he's just been an absolute star. He is one of the best show jumpers um that that is out there at top level and when when speed counts i mean let's be honest if we go back to blair castle and event rider masters track speed was key and it was a tough old rainy day and this horse just dug deep and delivered he's he's really gritty and he digs deep and he's the kind of horse that you want going out on your team in my opinion Um, i'm gonna check what the elo ratings say nicole the old okay. eventing ELO. See where he is in the all-time list. Well, while you're going to ELO ratings, I will say that uh, we've got another super old timer in Adelaide Hill. 18, still absolutely motoring. One last time out at the level below with Christine Bates and has just been a, a real superstar, has been at the top level for um, a really, really long time now. I think they stepped up to 
four star long as it was at the time back in 2011. Um, they've had a couple of Adelaide completions and they would come in second on the, the Echo Ratings Prediction Centre as to the ones to watch. Um, mm. I have him, uh, of the last 10 years, I have him as the third best rated horse. In Currently, what, who? Who, sorry? Sorry, Virgil. Virgil, Virgil, sorry, yeah. Virgil, Virgil. Uh, in Australia, in Australia. Okay, who comes above him? Can I guess? Now, this is the, so this is the highest ELO that they've ever achieved. So the ELO is okay. basically um, everybody starts on about 1,500 points. And then if you, uh, based on your performances over, you know, kind of an ongoing basis, people that finish ahead of you take your points and people you finish ahead of you take their points. So like the, there's about, there's a very tiny group that have got 2,000 points. I think it was a Ballamore class, probably one of the only British horses ever to do it. Uh, Hale Bob, Chipmunk and uh, Sam and a few of those, but very few horses get over um, 2,000 points. Now, the interesting thing about Australia right now is I have Vasily de Lassos as the top rated horse on 1960. Okay. And then I've got Shane and Virgil on 1948. So just ahead of Quality Purdy and Graf Liberty. I've got Shane rated second. Virgil rated second as the top rated Australian horse right now. But in the all time list, now don't forget you've got horses like Kilronin and with Paul Tapner, Paul like Broca, Holstein Park Lalani back in the day with Chris Burton, CP qualified again with Shane, Jemimo with Chris, Happy Times. Some fabulous horses come out in the last few years out of Australia. But where do you think Virgil sits? So oh, I told you already, didn't I? Virgil sits You told third. me he sits third. Who sits above him, though? Do you want to guess? Uh, go on. It's then. very tight. Um, it's very tight. Well, Vasily de Lassos is obviously going to. Yeah, well done. They're actually top. he is now. He's top. Okay, Andrew Hoy. Horse I'm very excited about. Australia have seriously got some nice horses going into yeah, Tokyo. Today, yeah. Just saying. Yeah. Um, oh, is it an older? Is it an older? No, horse? the clue is this. Re- this rating now it's only five marks higher than uh, Virgil and Shane are currently. So it was very tight. They're a current is horse, but this is a 2019 rating. So last year they hit a high point for this horse. Oh, um, it's Christopher Burton. Purdy. I was going to say it's got to be Chris Burton. Um, quality Purdy's on a one nine two two. Graph Liberty. Graph Correct. Liberty. Okay. Yeah, Graph Liberty's okay, just hitting out of them. But it just shows you. I mean, okay. I, I think you're right. I mean, when when you say a little bit underrated, I I think the Elo is a really good way of looking at um, kind of the last ten years of horses, and I was surprised. You know, I'm surprised that Vasily's top when you think of some of the ones that there, but I'm not surprised when you actually break down some of what Vasily has been doing. But Virgil is, you know, to see him just, I mean, it's 1948 for Virgil, 1938 for Sam Griffiths and Paolo Broca, and 1936 for Kilronan. But you, I mean, when you start putting Virgil into that territory, you think about how we talk about yeah. Kilronan and Paolo Broca now, of course, Paolo Broca, a five star winner. Um, at, at yeah. badminton and Kilronan as well, wasn't he? Wasn't he kill, was it Kilronan? Oh no, it wasn't uh, Kilronan. No, I know nothing. I know, I know nothing. nothing yeah, Kilronan was a five star stalwart, though, wasn't he? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, it's, it's, yeah. it's really puts it into context. Anyway, um, Virgil is another, Virgil another is the, Virgil is the main the main man. But I guess the what I'm saying, Nicole, is it'll be fascinating to see will he just deliver again, and if he does, will we all just say, well, of course he was going to. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing it. I really am. Yeah. Uh, okay, I've got another one for you to watch out for, though. And Go they on. actually won last time out as their prep run for this. That so they've had a great prep run. i um, just picked up a couple of show jumping time penalties to add to a dressage of thirty point two, and that that is Katie Taliana and Travolga the second, who have actually had they they actually beat on that occasion into second place. At Warrego, Marco Polo, and Emma Mason, who I mentioned just uh, a short while ago on the four star long. Um, but they, I mean, they've scored at 22, at, admittedly at the level below, but in the spring of this year. And, you know, they've had some really, really solid results. So I think they should be, they've been top 10 at Adelaide previously. 
Um, show jumping, they can have some poles. That would be it. Just depends how that goes, doesn't it? I mean, a huge yeah. amount depends on there because you're looking at people that can go and challenge, and I think it's a great pick. Um, I think Katie can absolutely go and challenge. Um, because as you say, the dressage, you'd say probably what a 20. I don't know, maybe, I mean, that you've mentioned that kind of record that they set this year. That's their best ever dressage test together, that 21.9 back in March. Um, but they have, I mean, I think in the four-star short here previously, or no, it wasn't here, it was um, Goldburn back in 2017. They did a 28.3. I think that's their best at the level. Yeah. Um, yeah, they can. They'll If they can stay somewhere in that look. Yeah, absolutely. Just yeah, let's see the watch. show jumping because it's been clear, it's been 12 and it's been everything in between. Yeah, and, and sometimes more than that. So that is a real question mark. Mm-hmm. Uh, one more shout out for me before we do a very quick podium for the four star short. Gemma Tinney has the ride on Wanda, who actually uh, was campaigned by Stuart last year before Gemma took over. Uh, the reins and has four star long form so obviously competing in the four star short here we're on the podium last time out as well so look out for for her very very talented young rider um come on d mm. podium can virgil can anybody beat him we're not actually going to do a show that features the beautiful andrew cooper are we and not talk about the beautiful <laughs> andrew cooper <laughs> we love andrew cooper yeah we, we we can't do a show and not talk about andrew cooper if you are a regular listener to the eventing podcast, you will know that when Andrew Cooper is in a, a field, which we preview, everybody gets the opportunity to Google Andrew Cooper and to look at pictures of a beautiful man called Andrew Cooper. However, without trying to break the illusion, this is a different Andrew Cooper, but you can still enjoy the beautiful Andrew Cooper all it's the same. It's just worth a Google. It's just oh, worth a Google. Listen. Worth That's a Google. All I'm saying. He's, he's very attractive. And the, the real Andrew Cooper that we're talking about is also absolutely lovely. So I'm not Absolutely. Saying, um, no, don't just, say lovely. Also very, yeah, also, also very, very good looking man. Yeah, very but, handsome man. Yes. And here but, we're looking Google at... It, listeners, you'll know what yeah, I mean. Could, yeah. could beautiful somebody, Andrew Cooper. Could beautiful yeah. Andrew Cooper actually go around four star short at Wallaby Hill on Omega God, Star? No, he couldn't. No, no he, he could couldn't. not. But you, you, I mean, he could just stand at the start box and, like, you know. He could blow his whistle. He could count them down, count them yes, in. That's a fine job. But he wouldn't be sure. going around on Omega Star. Now, Omega Star, yeah. Nicole, Omega Star is a fine cross country jumper and a very, very good show jumper. And the one thing I'd be looking at now, because they are stepping up a level here is just that, uh, how that dressage test goes. It's been in the mid-30s um, at three-star level as we go into four-star level now. Can they at least stay on that? You know, it was a 36.5 at Tamworth in the three-star short. If they can even stay in that, um, at least it will give them a good old shout. But I don't think Andrew Cooper will be going here on Omega Star looking for, uh, he won't be going in expecting a win, as you say, stepping up to the level for the it's, first time. yeah. Four star debut for the horse. Um, yeah, exactly. Watch this space. Okay, I I'm going to say that I think uh, that Shane and Virgil um, will win. I just can't see anybody beating them in the four star short. If they go all guns blazing, um, then I think that they will be ones to be uh, to be beaten. I think Katie Taliana will be second uh, with Travalga, and I'm going to say that. I'm going to go Gemma Tinney, Wanda, in third for me. You're not going to put in Christine Bates? No, I'll leave her for you if you would like her, but I'm I'm happy with my three. <laughs> not that I don't oh. love Adelaide Hill. I saw him at... Well, did he come over to Linear for the Event Rider Masters? He spent some time in yeah. Europe. Yeah, he was at Linear. Year, he, he was in the top ten. He was, he was yeah. eight. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. And it, he obviously loves his job, but I'm just going to say those three for now. Oh, I think you've missed the trick. I think you've mentioned Adelaide Hill while I was talking about Virgil or looking up how how all time Virgil was. And I think Adelaide Hill is. I think Adelaide Hill could challenge Virgil. You reckon? Do you think he wins? Well, does he win? But he's. (laughs) Come on, give us your podium. Podium. All right. I think there's a shock. And I think Adelaide Hill, (gasps) Christine Bates beats Virgil. Oh my god really 
Uh, I think it'll be tighter than you think. Okay, I think so. Okay. Yeah, they're. It all depends on if they keep the polls up as well. Another one of those situations. But if they do, and they can, because they did last time out at Albury, but I will say it was the level below. It's three star short. They actually won it there on a 25.7 start. Um, but this is an experienced horse. They had one down at Lanier. The two down at Monte Libretti uh, last year as well in, in October still managed to come second. And they tend to have one down is the problem. But, you know, I think that... Adelaide Hill will start on a score of 26 and we'll have one down, but we'll be clear inside the time. We'll finish on 30 and we'll just beat Shane Rose. So number one, Adelaide Hill, Christine Bates, Shane Rose and Virgil, number two. The world is shocked that one of the top rated ever Australian horses gets beaten into second, but Virgil will come back. And then number three, Number three, I think you probably covered the realistic number threes, but I'm going to go with a fairy tale story for Andrew Cooper on yes, his Andrew. four-star debut with Omega Star. Not his, yes. on Omega Star. Not Star's his, Omega Star's four-star star debut. debut. Okay, yeah. brilliant. Oh, you know what? Come on, Christine Bates, because otherwise we're just looking at Stuart Tinney and Celebration, and we've got two hot favourites, don't we? We like, do have two hot favourites. And the one thing I would say, listeners, is watch Wallaby Hill because if you have even the remotest interest in Aus- the Australian team for the Olympics next year, I think you will be seeing horses that will be challenging for team places this weekend. Oh, so go and look because it is going to be brilliant and I cannot wait. And Echo Ratings will have all of the stats for you throughout the weekend. Go and follow Wallaby Hill as well. Um and yeah, just enjoy it. It's nearly the end of 2020. This is it, what a year it has been. This is but it. The last preview show of 2020, listeners. We hope you've enjoyed it. Um, Dee, thank you. Thanks, Nicole. Enjoy it. This and- is the end. We're not going to, this is, until next March, I'm not going to be talking to you on a preview show. No more podiums. This is the final oh. frontier. Gosh, watch this space. Listeners, enjoy at Wallaby Hill this weekend. And thank you very much for listening wherever in the world you are. We hope that you stay safe and we hope that you enjoy what is going to be a brilliant weekend of sport. Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to the Echo Ratings Eventing Podcast. This podcast is available for free on iTunes, Spotify, Podcast Addict or wherever you usually listen to your podcasts. Make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss an episode. Find us at eventingpodcast.com or search Eventing Podcast on social media.